Hello everybody and welcome to our home here in Brittany in northwest France. I'm Jane, my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British early retirees, debt and mortgage free and we share our thrifty and frugal life with you. And every Wednesday we invite you into the sofa for a midweek money chat. So let's take a look at what we can have a chat about today. Facebook group and I know many of you from your comments that you leave on some of the videos that we make have difficulty getting your partner on board or everybody within your family on board. So that's what this week's midweek money chat is all about. How to get everybody within the family on board. Now let's talk about first of all what do we mean by family? I mean Mike and I as a couple we're a complete family unit in ourselves. You could be living with your parents, for example. Your parents could have moved back in with you. Your grown-up kids could have moved back home with you for a multitude of reasons. You may still have kids at home. There's so many ways to describe what is a family. So today is about whoever is in your family, however big or small your family is, about how to get everybody on board and how to make frugality a family affair. talk about today is financial goals. It's okay to have financial goals and share them with your entire family. For you and your partner, your family, your extended family to know those financial goals. So for example, you may be paying down or paying off debt and your extended family might have expectations of you that right now you can't put in your budget. It's okay to share those financial goals with them in exactly the same way. Your children may not understand why there are things that they can have and things that they cannot have at this moment in time. It's absolutely okay and this will be age appropriate and you as parents will know your children and how to deliver that message to them. But it is absolutely important to share those financial goals. So there's the first point that you can do to get everybody on board within the household is that those financial goals don't need to be a secret and they need to be shared throughout the entire family. family is being frugal or money saving, being thrifty or budgeting for whatever reason. If you are on the receiving end of that and somebody's presenting it to you, you won't feel part of it. It'll feel like something's being done to you and you might rail against it, you might fight against it. So one thing that's really, really important to do if you want everybody to be on board with this is you need everybody's suggestions from the family about how we're going to save money. How are we going to save money on our electricity bill? How are we going to save money on running the cars? How are we going to save money on our food shopping bill? How are we going to save money on clothing? All of those things. You would be surprised that everyone else might have some input on this and it isn't something that you need to be saying to them. So here's an example, if you need to save money on your laundry bill, for example, you need to, your teenagers, especially if they are just wearing clothes and not wearing them again, just because they're, they're not even dirty, you need to bring them round. Look up coaching methods of how you can bring them round to making those decisions for themselves about the right thing to do. It's getting those people in your family to make those suggestions so they feel part of it and they are not being done to. The next part about getting your entire family on board with frugality, with thrifty living, with money saving, with budgeting, is get everybody within those budgeting meetings and those decision making processes to come up with money saving or affordable or cheaper alternatives. Right now across the world people are having to make big 
changes. There may be things that you used to do as a family, for example, having a takeaway on a Friday night. Those things may no longer be in the budget. So looking for lower cost alternatives, instead of getting it from the takeaway, buy it ready-made from the supermarket. That's one step down. It could be that you as a family say, look, we'll have a night a week, but we're all gonna get together, we'll cook it ourselves. We're gonna make fish and chips. You're gonna make the batter. You're gonna peel the potatoes. You're gonna be cutting them into chips. I'm gonna be dipping them in. We're gonna have a lot of rotation going. It doesn't matter how you do it, but find your own low cost alternatives. It could be that you want to go and do something on the weekend and you're gonna say, well, look, if you wanna to go to the movies, can you as a family be looking out for the, the deals and the offers? When is it cheaper to go? Is it cheaper to go on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning instead of a Saturday evening? But that as a family is something that you can do. Instead of saying that we can't do anything, we're never gonna do things. We're gonna find a way as a family to do things that are cheaper, that are more affordable, maybe less often, but we as a family are gonna have a budgeting meeting and find a way of doing things for less. The next tactic that I'm gonna share with you, we call it the power of once. Once a week, once a month, one time only, once a year. And let me explain it to you. So often families are overstretching themselves, trying to do too much or as hobbies, whether as a couple, as an extended family, or with their children. It is absolutely okay and perfectly acceptable for you to have a discussion with your youngsters, with people in your family, to choose one thing. Choose one hobby, that you do that we pay for once a week. Choose an activity as a family that we do once a week. If that's not within your budget, once a month. Choose something as a family that you do that is special, that you set aside money for, that you save up for once a year. But explain that within your family budgeting meetings and explain that that once is definitely better than never and it's okay that we do this. So we can have each child maybe one thing that they do or one thing that they do all together. But it's a great thing to discuss with a family and it is the power of one. Another really powerful money saving tool and to keep everybody on the same team, on the same side, is praise each other when you do save money. Especially if you've got teenagers, it's too easy to ignore the good things to the do. It literally say to them, Simon, cheers mate, you hung up your towels, they're all dry so you can use them tomorrow. Louise, cracking job, you folded up your clothes, put them away so you can wear them again. Thank each other. We thank each other. I really make sure that I thank Mike for cutting the wood up, and bringing the wood in and saving us all that money. He really appreciates the fact that I cook the dinner every day. He really, really does enjoy that. But those are tools that will keep everybody on side, saving money, singing from the same hymn sheet, all those cliches, all of them. But you really do need to notice those things with each other and thank each other for each other. Praise each other for it because it just is the power of positive reinforcement. And instead of it being nagging, oh, you haven't turned the lights out, thank them. Cheers, lovely, you've turned the lights out, saving us a few pounds here. But make sure that you keep going with it because everybody will be on the same side if they think you're grateful for it. My next point follows on from my previous, but it takes it forward, doesn't it? We as a family and we as parents know that our biggest job that we have to do is to prepare our young people for the world ahead of them and the world around them. And one of the most important things that we can do to get everybody on board with money saving in our house 
is not only teach gratitude, but model it. Show it to each other. The most important thing that they can see you're doing with you, with each other, your respective partner, or you may live with your parents, for example, is demonstrating that gratitude for what you have. Doesn't matter what it is. Now we're living in extraordinarily difficult times. So if we have anything at all from a roof over to our heads, the heating can go on once a week or for a little bit of the time, we have food on the table, we actually have a massive amount to be grateful about. And we need to model that. We need to model that with our families and especially if there are younger people in our families. They need that to be normal. That needs to be the thing that they hear all the time. When somebody puts food in front of you, you don't just, cheers mum, that's not enough. Mum, I appreciate this, thanks, this is lovely. And it, you model that to each other and they learn it in the same way that they learn what love looks like and kindness looks like and forgiveness looks like. Gratitude is such an important thing to do with that. And at that part, you think, well, how does this fit in with frugal living? It's about really appreciating what you have and they learn that through modeling it. My next point, and I'm simply going to give it the title, that money must never be a mystery. It must never be a mystery to anybody in the house that you're living on a budget, that it's written budget, that there are budget meetings. It can't ever be a mystery of how much money is being earned. And believe you me, there are people out there in relationships where neither of them know what the other earns. If you want to really make a budget work and frugality work, money cannot be a mystery. The budgeting process can't be something that is done to somebody. How often in a relationship with somebody carrying all of that emotional load of all the money and the other person's just showing up? It can't work like that. And it is exactly the same. And as I said at the beginning, how you explain this to your children needs to be age appropriate. But they do need to know that money is earned, that we go to work, even if they need to know that I go to work for 35, 45, 50, 70, however many, they need to know that when you are not there, it's because you are earning money. They need to know where money goes. They need to know that everything from the lights to the food to everything is earned with time, is paid for with money. That there are banks and bank accounts and budgeting books and they need to know this. So there's my point for the everybody within the family and like I said, you as parents know how to explain that in an age appropriate way to your children but from any age, from when they can count to be honest with you, and they understand the concept of numbers. Money mustn't be a mystery. My next point as a family, to have everybody on board and understanding that we're being frugal for a reason, or we're budgeting for a reason, or we're money saving for a reason, and it's a great thing to do as a family, is have money earning projects as a family. And one of the greatest things to do with that, and it can really declutter your house as well, is to have your kids, as they're getting older, they're growing out of clothes, as they're growing out of toys, books, whatever, their bicycle's too small for them, is to be part of the reselling of those things. It could be that you and your whole family go off to a car boot sale, and sell all this stuff and you go off and do it as a family. It could be that your children see people turning up to the house, the doorbell rings, mum and dad go to the door and you're telling them we're selling the bicycle. You know, but they're part of the selling of it. You're not just gonna go, the kids aren't gonna suddenly go, well, where's my Lego? Oh, dad sold it. You're part of that. So what I, that's what I mean by part of the money making process. I 
want to raise to keep everybody on board so it's not all hard work and grinds and money saving is to factor into that and i've already talked about the power of once whether that's once a week or once a month or once in a blue moon it's factoring in family fun days where you've collectively saved that money it could be tell you what kids we're going to sell the toys are we going to save up that money for a family treat it could be a weekend away it could be a a caravan in Scarborough, it could be a camping holiday in Devon, but it, those family fun days, it could be a trip to the zoo, the movies, to the forest, it could be a mountain walk, any of those things, but everybody within the family needs to be part of seeing whether that sinking fund is growing. It could be a jam jar on the shelf in the kitchen where the money's going in and you're saving up for it. It could be a chart on the fridge. We need to save a hundred pounds, dollars, euros for a certain activity. And this is how we're going to accumulate that money. But having those family fun days and people understanding that you can't have them now, it doesn't mean we're never gonna have them, but we are going to have them once we've saved up for them and get everybody on board with it. My final part of this week's Midweek Money Chat is, is as an entire family, and this is tough for some people because I know they don't do this, is understanding with a, in a family that everybody has to wait their turn. They have to wait for their time. And especially if you've got children, this is something that we need to instill with them and teach to them and model to them from a very young age. I've recently come across the concept of one child has a birthday and gets given a birthday present and the other children in the family also get given a present. It's a choice that families make but there are consequences to that, aren't there? The consequences of to that are that each child might start thinking that they get something all the time. There is something else that happens as well. If something bad happens to people, if somebody's had a tough day, then one person in the family might say, it's been rough this week, we'll all get a takeaway. It's been rough this week, we'll all go out. And, and that kind of collective behavior is modeling to people when something goes wrong or something is bad, you spend money to compensate for that emotion. It's really, really important that everybody understands that sometime it won't be your turn. It's also a really important thing to learn to deal with disappointments and setbacks without either eating something or spending something. So it's a really important thing to discuss as a family we're buying Louise a coat this week. Louise needs the coat this week. We've saved up the money for the coat. You will get your new coat later. Louise, Simon's birthday's next week. So you and me, mummy, daddy, we're all gonna go out. Granny, grandma, we're gonna go out and buy Simon's present. And on your birthday, he will do that for you. So it's really, really important that in any of those budgeting meetings or decision meetings, that everybody understands that their turn will come. works better with unity and commitment doesn't it it doesn't matter if it's a, a sports club but it doesn't matter if it's a workplace it doesn't matter if it's a family it doesn't matter if it's a marriage or a couple and fitting frugality and money saving and budgeting in is exactly the same and getting everybody on board requires some work and it might even require some changes and I'll put my hands up and I'll admit at times it's not easy and we have to find compromises and ways to agree with each other 
But times like now, with rising prices, with energy prices through the roof, with fuel prices for our cars and our vehicles through the roof, and the knock-on effect of that and retail and all of that being so expensive, now is the best time ever to get everybody in the family on board and everybody budgeting together. If you've enjoyed this video today, I ask you one thing that you hit the like button. It helps us get our videos out there. If you're not a subscriber, come on, join the family. We put out several videos a week and if you hit the little notification bell button, you won't miss any of them. Just leaves me to say on behalf of Mike and I, thank you so much for joining us with our midweek money chat. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.